Welcome everyone to Online Seller UK podcast. Uh, this morning I have Tate from Amore Digital um, and we'll be talking about uh, getting your Google shopping campaigns ready for Christmas sales. Morning Tate, welcome. Hi Papa, you okay? Yeah, all good. So um, why don't we start with the introduction, you know, what you've been doing up to, uh, you know, these days and what your specialist says? Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, so to introduce myself, um, I have over six years digital advertising experience. So three years of that in-house at um, big companies. So looking after um, their digital advertising spend with, with regards to primarily paid search, which is mainly Google Ads, Google Shopping, and paid social. So Facebook and, and Instagram advertising as well. Um, with obviously digital advertising strategy laid on top of that. So yeah, the past three years, um, I've been a digital ads consultant and, and worked with, you know, from the the local um, the local business to a big uh, venture capital backed payment processing businesses in America. So I've seen a lot of different industries, but I generally tend to specialize in retail and e-commerce. Um, that's where a lot of a lot of my background is based and where um, I tend to focus a lot of my efforts um, with regards to sort of learning new strategies and, and keeping abreast of the market as well. Okay, excellent. So uh, let's straight dive into the to our topic. So, um, yeah, so, you know, getting Google Shopping feed ready for Christmas could be a challenging part. Um, so what would be the first thing you'd say uh, somebody needs to take to get to that get to this stage that they're ready for a peak period like in a Black Friday, Cyber Monday or however you yeah. call it. Yeah, so the biggest mistake a lot of businesses make and it probably ties in with their other marketing activity as well, but especially Google Shopping, is making sure the feed's in place way before Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Mm -hmm. um, a, lot of, a lot of retailers, they... They just they just get to Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and then they realize, you know, well, actually our feed is nowhere near in the position it needs to be. Because if you think about it, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the majority of retailers are going to be drastically increasing their bids, which means that even if you have an okay feed to start with and your bids are okay, then you're just going to be potentially flooded out of the marketplace and your margins are going to be hit even more than they, than they generally would be. So that's my first bit of advice. I, I would recommend looking at doing a feed audit at the start of September, end of summer, making sure you're ready for the business, uh, the busy, the busy period, um, because that's the last thing you want to be doing, uh, fumbling around with a feed. The second thing I'd say, and we all know that Black Friday is, is massive for promotions. So you should be utilizing the Google um, shopping promotions, which is obviously the little, um, the little promotion at the bottom of the Google shopping ad. And if you don't have that on Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you're going to really struggle to stand out on Google shopping because okay. every single retail, I'd probably say 90% of retailers are going to have it. And what I've personally noticed, um, especially recently, is that Google is taking longer and longer to okay. actually these promotions okay um, so you need to make sure that these promotions are in place a good week before black friday and you're setting your start date to actually go hit, get get the uh, promotion approved and then run with that um and i did touch on the third thing i would suggest as well i did touch on it just briefly then is bidding and one one mistake that a lot of retailers will probably make is they will probably not look at not look at where they're positioned within Google Shopping for their products. Okay. So what is going yeah. to happen on Black Friday and Cyber Monday is that all your competitors are going to come in, flood the market, and increase the bids for the products. So if you don't increase your bids on Black Friday, the chances are you're actually you're not going to get the volume that you'd like to see. Okay. So it's going to be it's going to be really really tricky to to obviously compete in the marketplace to that level. Now, now obviously you don't want to increase your bids to the point that your margins are taking too much of a hit, but you're going to have to expect to increase your bids to a degree to get the exposure that you need really. 
Um, so, so they're sort of the, the main three things when it comes to Google Shopping. Um, and it's just, as I said, it, it's just knowing as well, if you're a retailer, if you have a lot of, a lot of dead stock, now is the perfect time to get rid of that. So okay. even if you take a margin hit on, on the stock that's just sitting there, that's, that maybe hasn't been selling throughout the year and maybe won't sell throughout Christmas, now's a good time mm-hmm. to actually just dr- drive that stock out. Um, and at the end of the day, it's ca- you might not be seeing profitability on, on those items, but you will be seeing cash back into the business that can be um, yeah. reinvested yeah. back in. Yeah. So, Okay, okay, excellent. So I want to touch base on... Um, area of profitability, uh, which is yep. obviously the key with all these sales going on. Um, so how do you control your profit or how do you get the better profit through your Google Shopping company? Is there something that you can do with the feed or manage feed bit better or manage the bit bit better to get, yes, the sales, but also a um, uh, required or target uh, profit on that particular sale? Yeah, so what I would, what what I tend to notice, especially over the past year or two, is that Google has got really, really good with its machine learning. Mm-hmm. So if you're a business, if you're a retailer that's spending over three to five thousand pounds a month on Google Shopping, then if you're still running manual cost per click, you're potentially missing out on a lot of opportunity there. Right. Personally, when I start new activity on Google Shopping, if it's brand new account, I will start with manual cost per click just to control the costs to yeah. start with. Yeah. And then once data comes into the account, we've got a bit more, um, we've got a bit more data around the conversions, what's converted. That's data yeah. that Google can then use to actually um, acquire customers at a very profitable rate. Mm-hmm. So my suggestions there is look to for your key lines, test target CPA. So tar- okay. test target uh, return on ad spend or basically the Google machine learning um, tools that they have now because it has come on leaps and bounds and it's really good now. Okay. So I think if there's one way that you can instantly get a bit more control over the account in the sense of not having to worry about updating bids all the time, okay. then I would definitely put a bit more trust in Google if you have the data. So that's one thing. Another way to control profitability on Google Shopping, and it's something that I don't see it done often still, but I still think it's, it is important, especially if you're a retailer with a large catalog, yeah. is label up your product based on margin. Okay. So on Black Friday, for example, you might have your, your spread margin might be 50%, 40-50%, but that's yeah. not every single product's going to have that, that sort of margin safety net. There might be certain products that have 10%, 15% or even five or lower. Yeah. So to maybe protect yourselves on Black Friday, maybe label up those products uh, that are low margin and exclude them from the sale. Now, mm-hmm. as I said, it might tie back into stock. Maybe you have a lot of um, items that have, you know, you've got a lot of stock in, but the margin's low. Then yeah, maybe take the hit in that case. But there are ways to go around it. So if you label up your product, so you could do um, zero to 10% margin, 10 to 20, um, okay. you know, 30 to 40. And then you've got a bit of an idea. So you can actually say, okay, with these product ranges, we can afford to actually push more on Google Shopping or reduce the price and not okay. take as much of a margin hit. Okay. So that's yeah. another way to do it. Excellent. So um, I think you've given us a very clear picture on how to get things ready. So um, is there anything else you'd want to add to what you've already said um, in terms of uh, getting things ready for a peak selling period with regards to Google Shopping? Yeah, so um, so with regards to, to obviously Black Friday, it's such a, such a big period. And um, obviously, the problem with Black Friday is that retailers now have bigger revenue targets to hit and okay. it's just getting, the problem is it means that everyone is pressured into obviously dropping their, their prices and, and offering bigger and bigger discounts. Yeah. And as, as a lot of people will find as well, a lot of big competitors actually 
completely flood the marketplace. Yeah. So where they might have actually focused a bit more on key lines or profitability, yeah. it's almost like they're trying to, they take chunks out of the smaller retailers essentially because okay. they can afford to offer more because they've, been, they've got bigger targets to hit from the board essentially. So what I would say is, is one way to combat this sort of bloodbath <laughs> is what I like to call Black Friday is actually look to potentially acquire your customers a bit earlier than Black Friday. Mm -hmm. So rather than just conserving all your budget and plowing it into Black Friday, Cyber Monday, I think that's quite a mistake really because studies have actually shown that a lot of demand isn't actually new. It's just customers holding off, okay. waiting. They know Black Friday's coming. And I've seen it personally where retailers at the start of this month and halfway through their sales have i wouldn't say fallen off a cliff but they've definitely taken a hit and that is because customers are smart they're waiting for the mm -hmm. sales to come okay. so what i would suggest is actually run put a bit more budget a bit earlier on so okay. look to actually acquire your customers and put a bit more of a push around you know mid uh, to end of october when there's still demand and it's still too early for black friday so you can acquire those customers and then you can actually pitch them uh, the offers via your subscriber list and remarketing okay. list to keep the okay. cost down. So obviously remarketing and your email subscribers in retail are, are two of the most high return on investment activities you can do. So if you acquire the customers early and then do the, send the offers to the customers that you've acquired then, then you should see a... Um, a quite quite a bit more profitability via the mm -hmm. account rather than just going right let's do 40 percent off and let's increase our ad spend like 20k in the month and then yeah. you know you see because yeah. what i think a lot of um businesses don't actually understand is that the customers on black friday and cyber monday they're not loyal they're just literally looking for the best deal possible yeah. so obviously yeah. if you're going to take a hit on your your margin to acquire a customer, that's okay if the lifetime value is gonna justify that over a period of time. However, what, what happens is, is that customers, as I said, they just want the best deal on that product and mm -hmm. chances, mm -hmm. are, chances are that they're not actually gonna be a loyal returning customer, no. which means that the no. lifetime value is low and you've actually lost money on that, that order. So I'd say, I'm not saying Black Friday's overhyped, it can be for some, some industries very, very lucrative. But just be careful um, is all I'm saying. What, what I'd recommend is rather than giving away loads of margin, maybe look at offering for, uh, free, free gifts. Okay. So say, say, for example, you're a, a business and you have a high ticket item, but you also sell T-shirts as well, yeah. just to keep it simple or mugs or something. What you could do is obviously offer free T-shirt with every purchase or free T-shirt and a mug. So mm -hmm. maybe bundle free gifts instead. So you're still going to take a margin hit, but it really won't be as much as if you were giving away 40% on your high ticket item. So okay. that's what I would suggest to, to protect profitability a bit more during Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Excellent. So, right. Um, thank you, Tate. You've given us a lot of food for thought. Um, and I really hope um, so uh, people who are listening to this podcast I get a lot out of this uh, as well. So if somebody want, needs to find you, wants to talk to you, where should they contact you? Where should they find you, Ted? Yeah, sure. So uh, it's a good timing, actually. I've, I've just literally had my website redesigned. Okay. So if you want to check that out, go to amoredigital.co.uk. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to get in touch with me personally, you can contact me at ted at amoredigital.co.uk. Okay. Um, so if you've listened to this podcast, um, get in touch and I'll, I'll be more than happy to do a free audit or some free research, um, and just basically see if you're in a good position for, for Black Friday. So, um, and obviously you can find me on LinkedIn, Ted Parry and all the social media around that. So Facebook and Twitter primarily. Excellent. So thanks very much for your time, Ted. All the best. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, Prabhat. Bye.